concerns from departments about anything? Yes, sir. No, I'm good. Oh. No. <laughs> I know Dr. Hinton had her, um, what did she call it? Teacher's cabinet. Cabinet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she shared with us some of the um, uh, uh, things that you all talked about. And one of them was, uh, well, the top one was, uh, who's on the teacher cabinet in here? Everybody? Just you? Me and Amy mm -hmm. and Shreda. And Amy and Shreda. Miss Williams. Miss Williams. Okay. One of them was, uh, well, y'all talked about several things. And um, I know one of them was like negativity amongst the, amongst the, um, uh, and I thought that was interesting. So, um, you know, just to kind of piggyback off that, if, if y'all come up with a way that we can, that we can stop that, I'd certainly be open to, to discuss it because you know I'm usually the last one to hear about it unless something blow up or something you know. Um, not not that we don't have negative moments, but that was honestly the other. Well, there was another school that brought that up. Okay. So it, we we didn't have any input right, right, whatsoever. Right. And I know we had discussed it about professionalism and and everything. And, 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 and to be honest, just from the surface, from from me looking. I really don't see huddles and things that you know we see in the past. So I know it's getting a little bit better, but you know any of that stuff, I'm always open for improving the environment and making the environment a safe one. And and sometimes uh, when you have negativity, it makes it an unsafe environment because people don't want to do things because they're afraid somebody's going to have something to say about it. So uh, I think we, we're doing a much better job on that. Uh, I want to talk to you and talk to your departments about um, uh, ministerial ministerial duties. Okay, what ministerial duties mean? If, say, for an example, you go on a field trip, and when you go on a field trip, you know, of course, we sign a permission slip, and you know the you know the the policies and procedures that apply to a field trip. So you so once that bus pulls off and you've been issued that administerial duty in the absence of an administrator. So in effect you become responsible for anything that goes on. Well we get on this trip and I decide to well, I got a parent there, and I decide, well, let somebody else's child, you can go ahead and jump in the car with that, jump in the car with that parent and run to the store, or whatever, where you go against the policy, and then something happens, okay? Well, that administerial duty has been placed to, to you. So all the, the liability and everything that goes wrong affects you or the teacher. Now what happens, what will happen is the people will come and try to sue the school. That's the first thing they do. They come and they try to sue the school because they think the school has all this insurance money and stuff like that. But what happens, once you violate that policy, then you're no longer covered by the school. So then the suit becomes your issue. Okay? So I just wanted to make that clear because I know sometimes, well, I gotta, you know, sometimes we'll go on trips or we'll disagree with something that's policy. And, well, Nobody's here, whether it's a trip, whether it's in this building or whatever, nobody's here. And then sometimes we'll succumb to peer pressure that, oh, that's stupid, we need to do it this way. But I just want you to know that if at any time we succumb to peer pressure or whether we're the head person um, leading something that goes against policy, just pray that nothing goes wrong. Because if something goes wrong, then I can tell you if it's a violation in policy, 
then you're you going to be out there by yourself. Because when they go to sue the school and it was a, a violation of your minute, minute, ministerial duty and you know because the policies say you need to do it this way and then because you disagree with it, you did it that way and then something goes wrong and you're going to be out there by yourself. So I said that to, and I always say that, but I, I said it to make it clear that because I think, I think sometimes we get in the mind that, well, that's crazy. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it differently. Whether it's um, you go on a trip and when you get there, it doesn't make sense to, for one student to ride a bus all the way to Athens. Well, if you want to be covered by insurance and if something goes wrong, then it makes a lot of sense. Well, it don't make sense. Well, when I get to Athens, or when I get to Milledgeville or whatever, it don't make sense for us to take this bus with four students over to McDonald's to get something to eat. Go on, jump in. Y'all go on, jump in Dr. Gray, who's jumping Dr. Gray's car, who's here as a parent, and let him run y'all to McDonald's and come back. <coughs> You better pray nothing go wrong. So my point is, you're not getting one over on the administration because we're not there. Because guess who's the administration? You are. And so if something goes wrong because you were given that administerial duty, then you're responsible for everything that goes wrong. Okay? And I think that's very, very important to remind everyone and to have that discussion because a lot of that do go on and I'm not crazy but the reason I don't chase it and hunt it down and you know all I do is pray that nothing goes wrong I don't chase it I don't hunt it down and people may come back and they may even talk about it girl we went up there and man shoot we didn't take that bus over there. You know, man, we put them kids in that car and they laughing and think it's funny and we done got one over on them. You just just thank your lucky stars that nothing went wrong. Because, again, if something goes wrong, you come knock on my door and I'll try to help you as much as I can. But um, there's not going to be very much that can be done. And that's no different in any policy or procedure that you have in this school, in your classroom, in your if, if in your classroom, and y'all may have heard on news, the teacher kind of lose and decides to jack up a student, but you just went away from policy. So now, and you hear people that do that, well that school just didn't support me. Well you can't, you know, because you violated policy. So just wanted to really, really talk about the ministerial duty, making sure that any situation that you're in, that you, that you follow the policies, whether you agree with it or not, because as long as you follow those policies <coughs> and procedures, then you're protected and, and you can be supported. Um, but if we decide to go, and don't let anybody put you in a situation uh, otherwise because they don't want to follow policy. Don't let them pull you into that situation. Okay? Um, so I just want to put that out. So please remind, if you can't remember everything I said, just tell me to look at the, uh, <laughs> look at the tape. Because this is very, 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 very important. And we've been real fortunate that nothing has happened. But I, I know, you know, I, I know when, when when something's not right. Because what happens with bus drivers, they get conflicted. Because they know that their uh, supervisor's telling them one thing, and if I get a, um, a teacher or somebody from the school that's telling them something different, then they're gonna come back and they're gonna, well, you know, you told me to do this, and then eventually it's gonna come to my desk. And, you know, we just thankful that, um, you know, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Tomorrow, we know that the guy from the um, 
Striving readers will be here, so, and they're coming to um, just kind of get a snapshot of how we're how we're using, and if the fact that we're using the money, we're using it like we say we would. So I know one of the things that they look for, they look at the proposal that we sent in, and they just use that pretty much as a checklist. Um, they look at the PALS um, uh, uh, grouping. I know a lot of us got upset about sending that out, and, and I asked Ms. Watts to do the email about the PALS grouping, but quite frankly, that should have already been done. If we, if we were doing PALS, if we were doing some type of group, and we were supposed to have done that by Lexiles anyway. So I know some got upset because you had to go back by tomorrow and do your whole class if you hadn't done it, when quite frankly, that should have been all the way done, but that's the way we're supposed to have been grouping, you know, from the very beginning. So when things like that happen, that's what causes frustration and, you know, anxiety is trying to um, trying to change things that we have no control over. So encourage your you know encourage your 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 um, members or your department to to you know you all have to be the you all have to be you know I use the old coaching analogy. You know, if you're part of a team, it's usually the players that keep everybody up. Because usually the coaching is fussing and getting on people. And it's up to a team member to come over and say, man, or, or uh, you know, girl, don't worry about it, and encourage that person. Because sometimes it gets overwhelming, or it's, 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 it's a better way to do it. Um, I was in the hallway yesterday talking to a teacher, and they were a little bit, you know, well, and then one teacher walked up and said, listen, don't worry about it, I got an easy way of doing it, I can show you. And, and they, were, they were just doing it. And so it, it calmed that person down. So as, as you hear them, uh, as you hear them, uh, you know, complain is not really the right word, but if you hear them venting, instead of joining in on the vent process, just try to come up with a solution for them. That's always much more beneficial than joining in on the on the on the venting. I don't I listen, we all vent. You know, when I come out of superintendent's office, turn that off. No, I'm just <laughs> like that. Sometimes when I come out of there, sometimes, you know, you know, when I'm not totally clear of what it is that she wants, or if I thinking, oh Lord, I got to go back and it's just one more thing, then but I understand why it is, so I quickly snap out of that, and then I start looking for ways to lessen the blow instead of calling my system principals in and having a, you know, a bed party. And that's how you all can help the ones in your department, because I know that they get frustrated, and I know that it's sometimes it's, it's, you know, it's difficult, but just understand, like I told the teacher yesterday, there's a reason for everything that we do. And if we do it, and instead of fighting the fighting the thought of doing it, and just go ahead and do it, then when it's due, it's a lot less it's a lot less stressful. Okay. So, Ms. Ingram, do you have anything for um, the group? Mm -mm, just um, I don't, I don't know what you guys expect because I'm trying to get a ready at the middle school. But um, Ms. Bingham sent that last email. You saw the last email, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know, or iPads checked out. To anyone tomorrow, that was one of the, we called Miss Minion to, to verify because I, we could have interpreted her email several ways. Mm -hmm. She had said that we needed to make sure that technology, um, that the you know let me work this because I, I want to make sure the technology that was purchased through the grant needs to be utilized. I have two cards checked out for tomorrow. Okay, who, who, who has them? Miss. Um, uh, I know, oh, Miss Ferris has them tomorrow afternoon. And then somebody has them, Pulse, has them all day tomorrow. Okay. And then I've got to take a cart or take some out of a cart to take to the meeting for tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Is but they're just two teachers. Meeting? We just had to make sure, Miss Pena said when she spoke to us that we had to make sure that tomorrow that the 
the technology that was purchased with the SRI funds is being utilized for literacy instruction. Right. And we called her today and she said what we didn't want was if they come in and say, well, let us see the iPads you purchased. And some are in pause. I, I don't know about the math thing, but they'll be here in the morning. So as long as she's not using them in the morning. I well, think I know math today was using the book reader app to write a book. Okay. As long as they're so, using it for literacy. Yeah. She said we just didn't want them to come in and look and it not, you know, being mm -hmm. used for like, you know, I don't know, math, math right. or something, you know, as long so, as it was literacy. Nah, I think we good. You're talking about those specific uh, iPad cards. The cards that were purchased with Strider. Strider, your yeah. cards. Like, whatever room yeah. they're in, if he walks in and sees them, like, if they were in the math room, it would be fine as long as he walks in and can prove that they're using it for literacy right. and math. Now, we have two purchases on cards. We have some purchased by... CTAE. We have, we have mm -hmm. some four SR, four Strive and Reader cards. Right, and then the others and are purchased five CTAE. Five right. CTAE. So oh if we walk in and it's not being used, those are one purchased by CTAE. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they can pull them out and look at the back, yeah. they have the label. <laughs> oh, it says Strive and Readers on there. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But swap them right. Swap them right. Go ahead. Um, I had a member of my department that was absent from a faculty meeting Monday. Uh, they watched the video and said they were still unclear about what's expected of everybody for tomorrow. Because um, you mentioned regular halt time day folks tomorrow. Of course, they're going to be doing that. But what about everybody else who doesn't have halt time? And now, <coughs> if what we've asked is, is if, if content area we've asked them to do a reading strategy. <coughs> rest of y'all, you just carry on business as usual, okay? We're, we're not gonna, because I, when I talk to him, I'm gonna tell him on, uh, I don't know, what, what's your hawk time day? Uh, my Friday. Yeah, on Fridays, our art department does this during <laughs> hawk time. On Fridays, our CTAE, PE, you know, we do this on, and then we have pictures and artifacts to And it's, it's going to be that. okay, too, because they had to alter it. Because, see, at first we had two people coming, and one was more classroom, and one was more physics at the school. Well, one can't come. So we got one man doing everything. So by the time, he's only going to be here about an hour and 20 minutes. So by the time oh. he talks to us and looks at the background and technology and money and PLCs, he's not going to have time. If he does get time to visit, said so maybe visit a room now. If he does, we're going to hit Reading and you got to pause. Up, so yeah. everybody else can be okay. Yeah, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to have him visit at least one of or on the English hall, mm -hmm. you know, because he needs to see it. He needs to see us in action. Now, he may he may want to see more. Well, we're going to be piles in it up in mine, so if you want to bring it back, we're going to be piles in it up. <laughs> okay, good. Yes, we'll good. remember that. Okay. Jay usually does piles on Thursday. Yeah, piles. Hopefully, yeah. we got piles going on in English. Yeah. But, yeah. Go ahead with that. Yes, yes, ma'am. Just go ahead with your we, uniform we inspection. Scenarios, but we don't have to do that. We'll just do uniform. Yes, ma'am. And then what I'm gonna do is, is when I talk hawk time, I'll talk when CTAE or my activity classes do their help us with reading. Because anything with with um, CTAE and um, uh, fine arts and things like that, as far as they're concerned. That's that's a bonus. You know what I'm saying? That that is great that we're we're making it school wide, but that's on the bonus area. So we have we have artifacts okay. showing that you guys are it's a school wide thing. So they're not gonna walk into my room and ask me to see my charts. They might. People? That's what I'm saying. We got that ready for okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long they as might. we don't have to be reading. No, no, no. no. Okay, I think you're, that was a question your own too. Thing. Okay. Make sure you your data is there. If they yeah. Come in. Yeah, okay. yeah, because it's, it's more artifacts and okay. things like that. <clears throat> we just want to make sure our content areas, you know, because we, because I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the literacy uh, PowerPoint with them and show how striving readers, um, how we integrated that with our school wide literacy initiative and and all of that kind of stuff. And we have some um, Ms. Ingram, they have some artifacts and folders and things like that. So by the time he leaves here, they're gonna understand exactly how we, we use it. And it's not something that we just decided to do because 
on Thursday he decided to show up. I remember our um, last thing. You know, we're, we're getting ready for SACS, and when we have the district walkthrough, and then we have the SACS people coming uh, in February, we're going to really pay attention to that Elliot. We're going to really um, put forth or put a display of how we instruct. But what we have to what we have to understand that's the way it should be every day, anyway. You know, not we should be at that level, and the things that that Elliot report is saying we should be doing, and the things that the district walkthrough report is saying that we should be doing, is things that we should be doing anyway every day. So we got to get in, kind of get in that mindset. But it takes planning, you know, for those lessons that involve in students. And we're, we're slowly evolving there, but we've got to get to the mindset that it doesn't matter if Sachs walk in here unannounced or district walk through on the Elliott Port, they walk in here unannounced, which is what they did the very first time. I didn't even tell y'all they were coming because we wanted to get a true picture. But we got slammed on technology for that particular day. And we got slammed on some other things. Well, when we announced that they were coming, and we didn't get slammed on anything. See what I'm saying? So that should be where every day, we, whether it's a district walkthrough or not, or we know they're coming or not, that should be the standard operating procedure. And that's what we have to do to get these students where, where we need them to be. And it's hard if you don't practice it sometimes because I know I have a problem with uh, letting the students control you know to take control of the lesson because I'm just so honed into doing it myself That's and right. so I've started like saying getting a student to come up and That's teach right. something or That's you know right. show or demonstrate something That's right. and it is awfully hard to That's get right. yourself into that mode That's if right. you're not used to it That's right. so to make myself do it That's it's right. like gosh I got to let somebody else do this besides <coughs> me running the show all the time that's right. so it's hard to, and, and, to and that's that. how we learn by doing you know that's how we learn by doing um, remember our DOK levels we have these charts. If you don't have a chart, we'll get you one. And like I said in the faculty meeting, the biggest difference between DOK 1 and DOK 3, or even 4, 3 mainly, is just how you ask the question. Okay? That, it's just that. It's really that simple. Um, Dr. Cooper gave me an answer. As soon as I say explain how you got that, that just went up to three or two. Just that simple. If she gives me the answer and it's a recall, then that's level one, because she can recall it back to me. But if she can, ex if, when I say, well, tell me how you got that, and she goes into that, that just increased the DOK level. So if we can consciously do that, then we can get rid of DOK one. Because we're supposed to be operating in two and three, mainly towards two and three or three every day. Okay? All right. Any other, you got anything else, Ms. Ingram? Okay. Anybody else got any uh, concerns or? This one's uh, just random, but uh, just out of curiosity, um, I'm cognizant of it, I guess, because of all the data collection we're doing. Um, I've been out, and it seems like every time I've been out, I've had a couple students written up. And or and or, is there any um, y'all document that it's a, a sub that's writing them up versus me? Because I don't, I, I can't remember if I've written anybody up this year or not. Well, Maybe you don't get blamed for it. I can tell. Well, you. I know that, but I just, you know, I just don't know how it was. On that yeah. data sheet, on that data sheet. Want to know if the sub wrote them up? Do we include that as us writing them up? Because I had a student exactly. written up. I mean, she probably, I'm sure, she gave. Some attitude, and that was part of it. But it was she was written up something that I wouldn't. Have. Mm -mm. On that data sheet, it's you. Okay, on that data sheet, it's you. And sometimes, and on the on the the school wide sheet, it's me. So, you know, when when y'all do your department, when you do your department sheet, your numbers and my numbers may be off a little bit, 
but but what what the biggest thing on that thing is just is just keeping track and looking at areas where we need to focus. <coughs> like for example, in discipline, we know that we need to focus on our black males. Okay, some of our black males get the most discipline referrals. So now me, I need to uh, look at who they are and try to do something to see what's going on with them. Um, our, uh, Mr. Carol cut yes. our uh, attendance, you know, CCRPI has cut it to, instead of 10, it's six plus days. So now when we look at attendance, we need to look at it, well, we need to see who is getting close to six days or six days, and we need to see what's going on with them. So that's the whole purpose of this data tracking thing. Because without data, whether it's those categories or your grades or whatever, then, then you just, you're just playing Russian roulette on the things that you're doing. So you want to specifically hone in on the kids that that are having issues so you can increase and close gaps or whatever, okay? One thing we are going to work on, I've just got to do a little more research. Um, Ms. Williford uh, introduced me by way of uh, internet to a guy, um, which made a lot of sense. He, taught, he said before you can increase any gap, you got to close the attitude gap. And that is so true. Before you can focus on an academic gap or any other gap, that we've got to you got to close the attitude gap. So we're gonna try to you know, do a little more research to see exactly what it is he's talking about. And uh, but that is so true because our attitude is is uh, based on our attitude is how we basically how we function. Okay. All right. Anything else? Bring the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's fine. You know, listen, he can turn flips as far as I'm concerned. You know, I will have no problem. I will have no problem with that. All right, anything else? Mr. Cunningham, you good? Okay, I knew you were doing some typing over there. All right, listen, thank you for your time. And again, if you can encourage and you know, get the word out, and thank you for your time. And again, if you can encourage and I know I said a lot, people can have a look at that if you forget some of the stuff I said. All right, thank you.